Who could be the missing piece for Syracuse basketball? Plus, the women's team survived and advanced on Saturday and tonight. They got a critical matchup against UConn in the round of 32. All that and more here on Locked on Syracuse. You are Locked on Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everyone, into Locked On Syracuse. I'm Jackson Holzer, and thank you for making us your first listen of the day here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today we're going over the number one transfer available. He's from Stanford. He's seven foot one from Paris, France. Yeah, miles and miles away from Syracuse, New York. But hey, you know what? We, we love our French people here on the Locked On Syracuse podcast. His name is Maxime Reno. He is the number one transfer available. He is a center. He's seven foot one. He is incredible. And plus, the women's team, oh boy, it wasn't easy, but it got it done thanks to DeAsia Fair on Saturday, and it doesn't get any prettier against UConn tonight. Does Syracuse have a chance to beat the Huskies and advance to the Sweet 16. We're going to cover that and more here on today's edition of Locked on Syracuse. So going over the number one transfer, Maxime Reno, he is a very unique center. Syracuse has a rich history. And I'm not going to, on this podcast, tell you that this guy is the best center ever in Syracuse history. Never, not going to say that because he's not. But he's certainly the most unique. I don't think Syracuse has ever had a center or even someone that's seven foot or seven feet be able to move the way that he does, to put the ball on the floor, and to also shoot from distance. You are getting an all-around player in Maxime Renault, and there's a reason why he is the number one overall transfer currently available. He's from Stanford. Last season, he averaged 16-10. and He was all Pac-12. He was the Pac-12's most improved player. He can move. He can go up and down the floor, and I think he is the missing piece for Syracuse basketball this offseason. And the reason for that is because with this type of player, you're killing two birds with one stone. He's an excellent shooter. We've covered him before. He is 36% from the three-point line. That's what he did last season in Stanford, which is a power six team. So... That concern of, well, he's not doing it against strong competition. Well, he is. And he can finish around the basket. Renault is 64% at the rim. That's what he did last season at Stanford. Pretty impressive. Obviously, he's going to be highly, highly sought after. And I watched a lot of... I don't want to say film because I'm not a coach, but I watched a lot of Stanford highlights recently and he has excellent footwork. That's what I noticed about him. In the post, he's not someone that's just tall. We all know those centers out there that they're only good or they kind of show that they're only good because they're so tall and they're just matchup problems but they don't really have true post moves. They just are very physical. They have the size. They go up against someone who's maybe six foot nine, six foot 10, and they use it to their advantage and all credit to them. But there's a reason why a guy like Taco Fall is not thriving in the NBA, but was a beast in college. 
For those of you who don't know who Taco Fall is, he was seven foot six and played for UCF. Almost beat the Zion Williamson led Duke Blue Devils a few years ago. Right? This is a guy that can move in the post. He's got excellent footwork. There was a play against Cal this season that I watched where he backs down his defender on the right block. He kind of uses his muscle a little bit to get him off balance and then uses a little hesitation move, frees himself right up for an easy hook shot. He's very good around the rim, as I said, 64% around the rim. The other thing that Maxime Renault can do is he can put the ball on the floor. When was the last time Syracuse had a center that could really do that? When? Leave a comment below because I don't think they've ever had one quite like this kid. He can he can go to the basket himself. He's not the greatest athlete in the world, but when you're going up against other centers as your matchup, he can get around them because he's very nimble. That's a word that I'm going to use a lot. He's nimble. He's quick. There was a play against Washington where he gets the ball at the top of the key. And you have to respect his shot, right? I outlined it. I've said it before over and over again, 36% from three. So he uses a punt fake. And then he goes right around his defender and finishes at the rim. There are so many instances of that. Of him catching the ball at the top of the key using the fact that he can shoot to his advantage and going to the basket. I also mentioned he averaged 16 points and 10 rebounds. Folks, 10 rebounds per game. What has Syracuse lacked these past few years, really the last five years that I've counted? Rebounding. What I'm trying to get at here is this is not just a center that is just a one-dimensional offensive player, right? If you want to, for example, Jesse Edwards, right? Jesse Edwards, the last pretty solid big man that came through Syracuse, right? Before he ended up transferring to West Virginia. Edwards was someone who was very good around the basket, but you weren't really using him in a role where he would be moving around much. He was more like someone who was going to be standing in the paint, finishing around the rim. You can use him in the high pick and roll, but there's no threat of him shooting, so you can back off. But with Renault, he can shoot. The player comps that I have for him are... Let's go someone who is in the ACC right now, and that's P.J. Hall. He's just like P.J. Hall. Remember how I said after the Clemson game, Syracuse can use a guy like P.J. Hall? This is the guy. He looks and plays exactly like P.J. Hall. Because when you think of P.J. Hall, he is not the bruising big man. He's not like an intimidator, but he can kind of do it all out there. And we saw that and how he handled Malik Brown in that final game of the regular season. That is essentially what Maxime Renault can do. Okay, he's essentially P.J. Hall. If that's maybe not a good enough reference for you, think of a watered-down version of Dirk Nowitzki. Right? I'm not saying he's going to be a Hall of Famer or he's an NBA player or anything like that. But just to get an idea of how he plays and you're really not familiar much with P.J. Hall, perhaps you're familiar with Dirk Nowitzki. That's kind of how he plays. A center who is not an intimidating presence, who is going to eat you up and work you to death. This is a kind of a silent assassin, if you will, who can kind of do it all. And that's why I believe Maxime Renault is the missing piece for this Syracuse basketball team. He can kill two birds with one stone. He can shoot. He can pass. He can drive to the basket. He can finish around the rim. He can do it all. He's not a perfect player, and we're going to discuss that, plus rotation possibilities if he were to come to Syracuse right after this. 
This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The North Carolina Tar Heels can only be described as an armada. This one seed is as hardcore as it gets out there. So it's no wonder they secured a spot in the Sweet 16 this Thursday against Alabama in the NCAA tournament. They're a favorite picked by many to make a run for a championship. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. And hey, with the NCAA tournament now in full swing, the Sweet 16, Think about all the possibilities. Syracuse, unfortunately, is not one of them, and we hope that they're in this in this position next year. But you want to bet on one of the four ACC teams left? You still believe that this is the best conference in all of college basketball? Well, you can, and I know I'll be cashing in on that, and you should too. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the streaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, everyone, into Locked On Syracuse. I'm Jackson Holzer, your team every day here on the Locked On Podcast Network. We just discussed what makes Maxime Renault potentially the missing piece for Syracuse basketball to hopefully get them in the Sweet 16 next year, which is where we're at right now at the NCAA tournament. And by the way, I hope everyone enjoyed the first two rounds. It was certainly very, very exciting. And the ACC is, how should I put this? Still the best conference in all college basketball. But I digress. This I am not preaching about that right now. We're talking about Maxime Renault. What are his weaknesses? Well, he's not the greatest defender in the world. That's really all there is to it. He's not an elite shot blocker. You think about a guy who's seven foot one and averages less than a block a game. Not someone who is an elite defender. He tries. He gives effort. He's just not the best at it. Point blank. You know, it's just watch the film on him. Watch a few Stanford games over. You'll see what I'm seeing. It's kind of hard to give you exact plays and everything like that, but he can get out physical at times. That's just how he is. He can put on a little bit more muscle. I think he can maybe use 10 more pounds, to be completely honest with you. Not much, but that's the difference right there. That's essentially the only real weakness for Maxime Renault. There's a reason why there's he's the number one guy available right now, and Syracuse needs to do all they can to get him. First of all, is it realistic? Can they actually get him? Through NIL money, there was a recent article on Inside the Loud House published by Neil Adler. The answer is yes. They they should have the budget, just like most of the top ACC teams do, to go out and get the top transfers in the portal. And last year they did that. They got J.J. Starling, who was number seven, and I understand that you know he grew up in Baldwinsville and everything like that, but still, Syracuse can get really good players in the transfer portal. So as of right now, I would not count this guy out just because he's going to be highly sought after. Okay. I understand, but just never say never. They have, they can do this if they really put their minds to it. Having said that, let's say Maxime Renault commits tomorrow. 
Let's say he commits tomorrow. He goes to Syracuse University. We are all celebrating and declare ourselves the champions of the offseason, which is what really matters. Winning the offseason is the only thing that matters, not winning the national championship, guys. What would the rotation look like with him? First of all, he's starting at center. And he'll play probably about 30 minutes. I wouldn't say any more than that and probably not much less. Because if you match it up, him and McLeod, what they have historically done versus or Renault, Renault last year averaged about 30 minutes a night and Cloud, McLeod was at about 14 minutes. So that's a total of 44. If you can get that down between the two to a 30-10 split with McLeod bringing a different dimension, which is a better shot blocker, better defender, so he would come in on defensive situations, that would be the most ideal. So McLeod would come off the bench, obviously. Renault would start, play about 30 minutes a night. Number two is, well, I've briefly hit on this, but the big man conundrum that happens, which is um, who starts at the four? Who starts at the four? Well, it's either going to be Malik Brown or Donnie Freeman. And to be quite honest with you, it all depends on how good Freeman is right away. Some may say, just start Malik Brown, but to that I say, you never know. Don't rule out starting a freshman just because he's a freshman. I think we all know why that shouldn't be the case, right? Some freshmen are more ready than others, right? Judah Mintz comes in and was ready day one to start. Say what you want about him. He was day one ready to start in the ACC for Syracuse. Benny Williams another top recruit, was not ready off the bat. Quite frankly, he never was ready. But his freshman year, he wasn't. And some players develop. And of course, how can I forget, Carmelo Anthony was a freshman when he led this team to a national championship. So just because Donnie Freeman is a freshman and Malik Brown is more experienced in this scenario, don't rule out Donnie Freeman starting just because He is a freshman, and Malik Brown has more experience and is an all-defensive team member. I'm just saying don't rule it out, but chances are Brown would be the starter and Renault would be the starting center, and chances are I think Renault would be the best player on the team. I think Renault would be the best player on the team, truly, because I think he's better than Judah Mintz, and that's that's a good thing. I'm not saying, that's not a shot at Judah Mintz whatsoever. But if you get another really talented player, the expectation should be, this team should be headed to the Sweet 16 next year, which is where we are right now. That would be my expectation if Renault were to commit tomorrow. Simple as that. This team would be deeper. More experience. Renault is, I believe, going into his junior year, if not his senior. No, he's going to be a senior, which another thing is that Syracuse lacked this season was, well, they had no seniors. They didn't really have any juniors either. It was only Benny Williams. He was the elder statesman until he got dismissed. You're bringing in size. You're bringing in a veteran. You're bringing in someone that can score off the dribble, who's seven foot one. And can score because he can shoot. I think he would be the best player on Syracuse right now. That's no slight to Judah Mintz. Having said that, I think we've covered Maxime Renault enough. And we hope that he makes the best decision for himself. And we also will hope that he decides to give Syracuse a listen, and then ultimately commits to Syracuse. And uh, Fran Brown, who's been on the recruiting trail lately for the football team, uh, well, you know, if he can sprinkle in some fairy dust and wish upon a magic star, and we can get this kid to come to the Orange, because, man, 
He's the missing piece. He's the guy. This team needs him. And we can get the glory days back. One team that certainly turned it around, it didn't take very long, is the women's basketball team, which survived a thriller on Saturday and plays UConn tonight. We're going to talk all about it right after this. When you're hiring for small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has all the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. And LinkedIn is a is a company that I use all the time to look at the latest opportunities. And I highly suggest you do it too, because LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else LinkedIn does all that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make that process easier. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process easier and quicker. 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Welcome back, everyone, into Locked On Syracuse. I'm Jackson Holzer. We went over Maxime Renault, who's the number one transfer available, and he is critical for Syracuse to get in this offseason. But now it's time to shift our focus to the women's basketball team, which survived a thriller against Arizona in an upset win. That's right, six seed Syracuse upset 11 seed Arizona, 74 69. And you might be asking, what do you mean? Syracuse was the sixth seed. Arizona was the 11th seed. How is that an upset? Well, quite frankly, Vegas favored Arizona. And it was a kind of back and forth game. Syracuse kind of got its act together in the second half, started playing better. And then it looked like the odds makers were going to be right. Looked like they were going to be right. Syracuse was on the ropes. They were down by five with about four minutes to play. Didn't look good. And then DeAsia Fair took over. She's a special player. And there's a reason why on one of the first pull Fridays that we did here, you guys voted that DeAsia Fair is the best player of all the Syracuse sports. She's the best one right now on campus. She goes on a personal 13-3 run. In the final three minutes, and Syracuse survives in advance. They survived. That's all you got to do, right, at this time of the year? I thought the moment that, honestly, I thought Syracuse had it because for a while I didn't think they were going to win just by the way the game was going. When DeAsia Fair drained that three with about a minute to go, it gave Syracuse a two-point lead at that point. Arizona's best player was, I think, fouled out at that point, too. That was the moment where I knew Syracuse was going to win. A special player in DeAsia Fair. And tonight, she's going to go against another special player. And for quite frankly, Syracuse is going against another special player. Because it's a team sport. UConn. Tonight at 6 on ESPN. The three-seeded Huskies. Have not lost. I have it written down here. They haven't lost since February 11th. 
what is that, six weeks? In games, that's 10 straight wins for UConn. They might be the hottest team in the country right now. It ain't going to be easy, and the Huskies have their own special player. She's finally healthy and had an All-American season. She's also a guard, just like DeAsia Fair. Paige Beckers. Like I said, she's dealt with numerous injuries. It's good to see that she's back and healthy. But she leads this UConn team that this season was 12th in the country in offense. Of course, we all know their head coach and Gino Ariema, one of the greatest college coaches ever. This is going to be a tough one. This is going to be hard to beat UConn in their building, by the way. Remember, UConn's a three seed, and in women's basketball, if you are a top four seed, you get to host the first two rounds of March Madness. That's something that maybe the men's the men's tournament might want to consider. I think it would be pretty cool. I always like that, getting to host. But in their building, that's not going to be easy. Aaliyah Edwards is another one who's a dominant forward for this UConn team. She averaged 18-9 and nine this season. That's another person that Syracuse is going to have to contend with in order for them to win this game. But to be quite honest, you know, you never want to say never. And with DeAsia Fair leading the charge, Syracuse is always going to have a chance. But this is going to be their toughest test of the season. If they can get through UConn, they can make a run to the Final Four. I, I wholeheartedly they believe they can win the next two games after this one if they can get through UConn. But folks, is this the end of what has been a terrific season under second-year head coach Felicia Leggett-Jack? Is this it? Hopefully not. And we're going to discuss that tomorrow. We're going to discuss the outcome of this game that's happening tonight at 6.00. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. If you like this video, click that like button and subscribe to the channel and turn on those notifications so you can know immediately when the next podcast is coming out. We're going to talk a lot about this women's basketball game tomorrow. And who knows? Maybe there'll be some more men's basketball news regarding the transfer portal as well. All that and more on the Locked on Syracuse podcast. We'll see you on Tuesday.